The news at noon starts right now. A judge in Russia has convicted and sentenced American basketball star Brittany Griner to nine years in prison. This after bringing cannabis oil and vape materials across the border there. She was convicted for drug possession and smuggling. The judge said the time Griner has spent in custody since her arrest in February will count toward that nine year sentence. While recapping the evidence and giving her findings, the judge said 31-year-old Griner illegally brought drugs into Russia. Before the verdict, Griner made a final appeal to the court saying she had no intentions to break the law by bringing vape cartridges with cannabis oil into the country when she flew there to play basketball. Flaring tuppers have boiled over in a deadly way. San Antonio police have arrested a man who they say shot and killed someone during a fight. They found both the suspect and victim outside a Southside home last night in the 400 block of Ike Street. As Katrina Weber reports, police say this is now a murder case. San Antonio police roped off a section of Ike Street, hoping to contain the evidence surrounding a murder. They found a 27-year-old man who had been shot when they arrived in the 400 block after 8 last night. But it wasn't long before their attention extended beyond their crime scene tape as a crowd began to gather. While officers found emotions running high there, they say the suspect, 38-year-old Aaron Lee Fisher, remained calm as they took him into custody. However, the gunfire that killed the victim had erupted in the middle of a heated situation. Police say what happened here was the result of a fight. In fact, they say officers were on their way to answer that call when they found out there had been a shooting. Although paramedics tried to save him, the victim died before they could take him to a hospital. Police say they did find the murder weapon at the scene. It wasn't clear right away what the relationship was between the victim and Fisher, or why angry words ended with deadly violence. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. And just into our newsroom, new details about the suspect in the case. Police say that he is 38-year-old Aaron Lee Fisher. We have a picture of him here. Online jail records show he is facing a murder charge now. No witnesses for the defense as both sides rested this morning in the murder trial of Jorge Izquierdo. He's accused of fatally shooting his girlfriend, Cora Nickel, two years ago. Closing arguments were heard this morning, and the jury just began their deliberations. Deliberations, It found guilty. Esquerdo is facing 5 to 99 years or life in prison. Follow KSAT.com for the latest. An apartment community on the city's west side now a crime scene after a shooting at the Cassiano Courts. San Antonio police say one person is hurt, but the suspect is nowhere to be found. Jonathan Cotto reports. Neighbors say shootings at the courts are not out of the ordinary. Overnight shots rang out at the Castiano Courts on the city's west side. San Antonio police were called out to the housing projects located on San Lino Walk on South Picoso shortly after 3 a.m. This is a neighborhood near South Sarsamora, not too far from Highway 90. Inside of this two-story barrack-style unit, a 34-year-old woman with gunshot wounds to the hand and the leg. But the rounds that hit her came blazing in from the outside. It's unclear if this was a drive-by or if the persons involved in this shooting were on foot, but one thing is for certain, the back end of this apartment was definitely lit up, and by the looks of it, by two different caliber weapons. Investigators canvassing the scene for several hours in search of any evidence and details that would provide insight as to why and who would shoot up this home. Neighbors who preferred not to speak on camera say the sound of gunfire that woke them up this morning is not unfamiliar at the courts. One man says he heard about 10 shots fire off and says it was loud. Those involved did take off. Police say the victim was taken to Bamsey where she is being treated for her injuries and could not provide a description of the shooter. They added she is expected to be okay. The investigation is ongoing. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. And the hot, dry weather continues to fuel wildfires. The Smoke Rider Fire in Hayes County, now at 800 acres and is 60% contained. Meanwhile, the Big Sky Fire in Gillespie County is 50% contained. It's burned 1,400 acres. That's all according to the Texas A&M Forest Service. It says it has responded to 28 new wildfires just yesterday. And that is some seriously bad news because... 
we don't really have a lot of rain in our forecast today. That's, that's the biggest question. When is Mother Nature going to help us out and give us a sprinkle or two? Well, okay, sprinkle or two, that's one thing. But as far as, you know, good, quenching, decent rain, uh, there's just unfortunately nothing in the offing. I mean, you look at that picture right there, and you can see that, boy, there are no rain clouds around here whatsoever. Now, as we look at the, the fire danger forecast, this is for today from uh, Texas A&M Forestry. As you can see that, yeah, still high and moderate and really until we get you know some good uh, days in a row of decent steady rain this is really not going to be changing although it is slightly better than what it was at this time yesterday the wind is not going to be quite as strong we'll still have a breeze obviously you still have to just watch you know from here till basically further notice be really, really careful, and outdoor burning is not a good idea whatsoever. Smattering of clouds around here as of right now, but um, yeah, not really doing much to uh, block any of that sunshine. It is going to be another record tying day today, like we had yesterday, 103, identical to that, but slight break tomorrow and Saturday, maybe a couple of those sprinkles, but uh, not anything significant. How long will that last, and do we return to the triple digits? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. New at noon, the alleged leader of an international uh, human smuggling ring, Felipe Diego Alonso, was taken into custody during a takedown operation in Guatemala. That's the latest from federal officials who held a press conference this morning in San Antonio. Just a couple days ago, on August 2nd, coordinated domestic and foreign law enforcement efforts over the past year culminated in a massive law enforcement takedown operation in Guatemala. That operation resulted in the arrest of Alonzo and his three alleged co-conspirators in this indictment, along with 15 other individuals on an array of foreign criminal charges who are alleged to be a part of this extensive human smuggling network. Assistant Attorney General Kenneth Polite says that the spring of 2021 is when a young woman died. She was being smuggled across several countries as part of Alonso's smuggling ring. The law enforcement operation just part of a joint task force, Alpha's efforts, which has created uh, which was created in order to investigate these human smuggling cases. Now to the latest in Uvalde, where Uvalde CISD is delaying a discussion over District Police Chief P. Arredondo's employment again. Arredondo has been criticized for his response to the mass shooting at Robb Elementary. The meeting was supposed to happen today, but was canceled because Arredondo's attorney cited a scheduling conf conflict. The district says it granted the attorney's request for a delay to make sure Arredondo gets a due process. As of now, he's on unpaid leave until a new meeting is scheduled. And the Dallas Cowboys defense led the league in takeaways last season. What was their secret to success? That's coming up later in sports. We're just a few days away from the start of a new school year, and like every year, there will be a lot of changes for students. New grade, new classroom, new teacher, and maybe even a new school. And there will also be a lot of change for us parents. David Sears found out some of those changes could be costly. So one of those big changes that families are going to see is that they're going to have to go back to filling out a free school meal application, free reduced meal school meal application at their local school, just like we did pre-pandemic. That is a huge adjustment because it means some students will not be receiving free breakfast or lunch like they did during the pandemic. Earlier this summer, President Joe Biden signed the Keep Kids Fed Act, but it falls short of the free access for every student. Combine that with higher prices at the pump and at the grocery store, man. Inflation has just made it really difficult for a lot of families, and, uh, and we see it, and, and we feel it. And for some, even more pain is about to be felt. The biggest thing is also for families that in the middle income that may not qualify for free reduced meals, but are still having a difficult time getting the basic needs for their family. That's where No Kid Hungry comes in. They provide relief for some families. Here in San Antonio, we've provided over $800,000 in, in grants to schools just in our community. Because of a grant, one of those schools is still able to feed students free breakfast. What that does is that now the child doesn't have to get to school early to get a meal. They get a meal at their desk in their classroom. So even if they're running one or two minutes late to class, they can still get a breakfast. No Kid Hungry has conducted studies that prove breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Feeding students breakfast can keep them in school and keep those minds and bodies growing. 
So that was a 4% or more increase in a decrease in chronic absenteeism by just having breakfast every single day. David Sears, Case at 12 News. Remember to check with your child's school to make sure you have all those proper forms filled out. You can find complete coverage as our children return to class on KSET.com. You can scan the QR code on your screen and go to that page right away. And one of the stories you'll find is how parents may have trouble getting their kids into after school programs. Many school districts and their nonprofit after school care partners are facing staffing shortages. The YMCA says they're looking to fill 50 spots that could provide after school programs for 300 kids. Many of those openings are in the SAISD area. SA Youth says it's looking for about 15 to 20 more hires and some of the after school programs hire teens as young as 16 years old. And that is not the only event for job seekers. Comal ISD also looking for workers. The district is looking to fill several positions, including the much needed bus driver position. The shortage is so severe, the ISD says they're actually limiting bus routes for the coming school year. Today's job fair starts at 5 this evening. It ends at 7 tonight. It's happening at the district's support services building in New Braunfels. Now we're taking a look at live cam, not a cloud in the sky. As Mike already mentioned, rain chances pretty much non-existent. It's never good when it's 93 degrees at noon. <laughs> there's, a, uh, yeah, unless there's a big old rainstorm coming. Yeah, and especially when you then kind of you know do the math and the normal high temperature is 97, and we're already you know going to be there by in in about the next hour or so. And 93 uh, dew points has dropped down somewhat. That number was up to about 60 or excuse me 73 earlier this morning. Southerly wind 17 miles per hour, so a decent breeze out there. 103 for a high temperature later on today. Again, that will tie the record just like we did yesterday. The aquifer dropped down half a foot. Of course, check with your local municipality as far as any watering restrictions and mold they are on the low side that did drop down from yesterday's reading okay what's in store how about a couple of showers a little bit of break from this heat yeah how long will that last details coming up in just a couple of minutes okay he said the word perked everybody up showers well okay <laughs> in a situation like this, to say the word showers, everybody gets really excited about it. But the qualifier that we've been using for the past couple of months is don't get really excited about rain chances. I mean, yes, we do have a small chance for some rain, but it is by no means going to be uh, any sort of a, a good shot. The further east you are, maybe a little bit better chance, especially uh, coming in here by about uh, Saturday. So we are at day number 54. That was yesterday as far as the triple digits. And we keep, uh, you know, Keep tabs on this because we got to compare it to way back in 2009, 2011. So we are almost at uh, second place 2011. And of course, then just uh, two more days on top of that will be tied with. And as it looks right now, that is going to happen then next week by roughly about midweek. And also to keep in mind on those two years, the majority of those days did come in August and then some actually into September. So obviously we've had, you know, our lion's share in uh, June and especially last month when all but two days hit triple digit temperatures. Right now, 93 in town. Same thing at Converse over by Randolph, 97 already in Divine. That's the actual air temperature right now in Divine. And then we still have some humidity. Now these numbers have dropped a little bit, but especially when you get temperatures this hot already. We've got uh, heat index readings and that 97 may be a little bit of a uh, erroneous reading down there in Divine because now the heat index is coming in at 93. A little bit uh, iffy there, but anyway, it feels like 99 right now in New Braunfels, 97 at Hondo. Throughout the rest of today, yeah, it's going to warm up very quickly, you know, three, four degrees per hour, basically. We will make it up to triple digits by three o'clock and stay in triple digit range all the way in through dinner time and early evening. So a good you know, once again, like a, a four hour, four and a half hour span where temperatures just out there at the airport are going to be above 100. So, yeah, once again, air conditioning units are going to be getting a workout. Lots of clear skies tonight. And we'll have uh, readings still in the 80s as we go into the evening hours. And the forecast heat index today, we'll be seeing these numbers up in the you know, 104, 105 range and hotter than that. And so that is what is prompting the heat advisory to once again be in effect. So tomorrow, we will start to see the effects of a little wave coming in here from the Gulf of Mexico. 
Um, what's interesting is we were just talking about this earlier. This same graphic that I showed this morning was a bit more encouraging. I think kind of overstated things somewhat for tomorrow, but now it doesn't really have much of anything around here, and I think that's about our rain chances. I got a 10% shot in for tomorrow. Most of that would be off to the east, but even going through the evening hours, not really a heck of a lot out there. Jump to a different computer model, and uh, it's got maybe a couple of showers again around here throughout to tomorrow, but then on Saturday, and get the emphasis is this always paints things in with sort of a broad brush. So even though this looks really impressive here, this is just kind of showing that yes, there is the small chance for some rain throughout a, a chunk of the area. It doesn't mean it's going to be raining constantly by any means, nor will we get a lot of rain. And again, most of us aren't going to be seeing anything, unfortunately, as far as rain goes. But at least with the extra cloud cover around here, temperatures will be shaved off a few degrees. So instead of triple digits, it'll be close to it, but it'll be 99 tomorrow and then maybe a little, dare I use the word, cooler on Saturday, not as hot, we'll put it that way. 93 degrees today, again, and where we are right now, we're gonna be warming up then to 103. That's gonna tie the record for today. Kind of breezy, not as windy as yesterday, but still, that fire danger remains very high. And we do have the heat advisory in effect up until eight o'clock this evening. This is the one that was issued for yesterday, and then late in the day yesterday, where the service just extended it overnight and in through the rest of the day uh, today and in through the evening hours. And we will continue, again, to chalk up these triple digit temperatures temperatures today, then that slight reprieve back to the triple digits on Sunday and going in through a good portion of next week. So again, by the middle of next week, tied for first place. I don't know if that's something to brag about, but it just is what it is. That is not an honor we look forward to. Thank no. you, Mike. We'll keep our fingers crossed for those potential sprinkles. Anything helps. Bring it on. All right, Larry, what do we got shaking in training camp? Tell All right. us something good. So we have Terrence Steele from Steele High School, who's a member of the Dallas Cowboys. And now we have another local young man, Dennis Houston, out of Warren High School, who is looking to make it with the Cowboys as an undrafted free agent. And I'll tell you what, he's making catches and definitely turning heads. And Nico Collins says he really appreciates those Texans veteran wide receivers coming up. Comfortable, man. You know, we got his back 100 in the way. You know, he quarterback. You know, we got his back. You know, we trust in him. He trusts us. You know, and so and that's, that's what it's all about. Houston Texans wide receiver Nico Collins feels the connection with QB Davis Mills is improving every day in big board sports. Camping with KZAN, powered by Davis Law Firm. Many already know about Terrence Steele out of Steele High School and how he's grown into a valued offensive lineman for the Dallas Cowboys and looking to solidify his role as a starting right tackle. But many of you may not know about another undrafted free agent from San Antonio, also on the Cowboys camp roster, and that's wide receiver Dennis Houston from Warren High School. He was signed by the Cowboys out of Western Illinois, and he's turning heads in camp and catching the eye of everyone from C.D. Lamb, Mike McCarthy, and Dak Prescott. So what does Dennis think of the praise he's getting? I'm just trying new things and learning new things as I go along, adapting to how they play me and how I can improve every day watching the film. But I mean, I win when I when I expect to, when I think I'm supposed to. So that's what that's what it is. Cowboys hard hitting safety J. Ron Curse got a scare in camp earlier this week when on the same day that James Washington went down with a broken foot, Curse came up limping with a knee injury. He would walk off the field under his own power but returned shortly. He said he just planted awkwardly and he was cleared by the doctors to keep going. Now, Dallas defense led the league in takeaways last year with 34, 26 from interceptions and Curse was asked, how did that come about? Uh, that came from my coaches, you know, uh, just a ball mentality. You know, we talk about the ball every day, whether it's a script sack or a forced fumble or a pick. You know, we just we pride ourselves on getting the ball. And uh, I see I see nothing different with this year, the way we're we're approaching everything and uh, just going out there and trying to compete and, uh, you know, get better every day. We're going out there and, you know, we know the numbers that we had last year. We're trying to beat that. 
All right, let's go to Houston now, where many are hoping second-year wide receiver Nico Collins is ready to break out. During the offseason, Collins was part of the Oregon trip that receiver Brandon Cooks and quarterback Davis Mills and other skilled players took. According to Collins, the purpose of the trip was to work on cohesion and precision. Now, Collins presents an interesting matchup in the Texans' passing game. At 6'4", 215 pounds, the former third-rounder from Michigan is a size mismatch when going against standard DBs. Cook Cooks is the number one wideout, and Nico was asked, how does he feel being a compliment to Cooks? I appreciate all the vets in our room, man. You know, him, Chris Conley, Philip Dorsett, man, Coach Ben, you know, everybody, you know. Guys have been in the league for a minute, you know, they know what to expect. You know, as a young guy, you know, that's what you want to look up to, you know, guys like that. You know, um, they feel like they helped us out 100% of the way, every step, you know, every young guy that got here, you know. So um, I feel like he always, they always pushing us to get better. You know, we always picking their brains, man, and I appreciate them a lot, for sure. Head coach Levy Smith is the one who said Nico is a perfect compliment to Cooks. Always a perfect compliment to Cooks or the cook. Hopefully they'll get some chef's compliments, compliments <laughs> to the chef this season. Yeah. Right. Hopefully. I don't know. Texans, I like them, but a little rough. Thanks a little for that rough, there. Yeah. Poor guys. Better season this year. The federal government taking action that may calm frustrated travelers. We're going to take a look at a proposed rule that would benefit anyone booking a flight. A credit rating agency sent out incorrect scores for millions of Americans seeking loans. A mistake with major implications for victims. If your rating took a hit, you've got options. Details coming up. New today at 5. Have you shopped for your school supplies yet? I think this weekend is the tax-free holiday. Spiral notebooks, colored pencils, folders, watercolors. The list can get long and pricey. So 12 on your size Maryland boards did some shopping for you, comparing the prices in the back to school aisle at popular stores. The report card is coming up. It is today at five. You want to see it after entertainment tonight. Four Louisville police officers involved in the deadly Breonna Taylor raid now facing civil rights violations. The Justice Department charged officers Joshua Janes, Brett Henkison, and Kelly Goodlett, along with Sergeant Kyle Meany. Louisville officers shot and killed Taylor after they knocked down her door while executing a search warrant. Taylor's boyfriend fired a shot. It hit one of the officers as they came through the door and they returned fire, hitting Taylor multiple times. After more than five months in Russian custody, WNBA star Brittany Griner has been sentenced to nine years after being found guilty in her drug possession trial, which the Kremlin insists is not politically motivated. In closing arguments today, Russian prosecutors pushed for her to serve a near decade-long prison sentence. This comes as the U.S. offers a prisoner exchange and calls for a diplomatic solution. NBC's Justin Finch has the details. Basketball star Brittany Griner heavily guarded as she made her way into a Russian courtroom Thursday for the final day of her trial, where she made an emotional plea to the judge deciding her case. I had no intent to break any Russian law. Griner also holding a photo of the team she plays for in Russia. In court, prosecutors calling in the state narcotics expert who analyzed the cannabis oil found in Griner's possession as their witness. Griner's defense challenging that expert, claiming his analysis was flawed and failed to meet official standards. Griner's predicament began back in mid-February with Russian authorities booking her on drug charges after vape canisters of cannabis oil were found in her luggage at a Moscow area airport. Cannabis oil is illegal in Russia. Griner later pleading guilty, admitting that she was rushing to pack her bags and mistakenly included those cartridges, which her lawyers told the court were doctor prescribed to manage pain. Griner's voice breaking as she addressed the court today. I made an honest mistake. And I hope that in your ruling that it doesn't end my life here. Back in the U.S., President Biden reacting in a statement, calling the judge's decision unacceptable and for Russia to release Griner immediately so she can be with her wife, loved ones, friends and teammates. The U.S. has a prisoner swap offer still standing, proposing Russian-held Griner and former Marine Paul Whelan for U.S.-held Russian arms dealer Victor Boot. The entire American government remain committed to bringing Ms. Griner home safely to her family, friends, and loved ones. 
Legal experts suggest that prisoner deal could enter his next steps now that the judge has reached a guilty verdict in Griner's case. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is expecting an update on its COVID-19 guidance. The plans could be released as early as this week. CNN reporting the agency is set to ease quarantine recommendations for unvaccinated people who are exposed to the virus. Instead of staying home for five days, they can go out with a mask and test themselves at least five days after exposure. Those with symptoms should continue to isolate, though. The agency also planning to de-emphasize six feet of social distancing and regular testing in schools. These changes still, though, being discussed by the experts. The United States may soon have a new tool to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. Pfizer and Moderna are developing what's known as bivalent boosters. Those are vaccines that are comprised of the old formula along with a new formula that focuses on the Omicron BA4 and BA5 subvariants. The Food and Drug Administration says if they approve the shots, they could become available as soon as next month. Officials say roughly 124,000 COVID-19 cases are confirmed each day, but the accuracy is in question because many of those cases are undercounted. Now to the latest on the battle over abortion rights. President Biden signed a new executive order on out-of-state abortion access and commended voters in Kansas for the monumental vote that has protected abortion care in the state's constitution. NBC's Rena Roy reports. Newfound hope in the Democratic Party ahead of the midterm elections. In the American heartland, the people of Kansas send an unmistakable message to MAGA Republican extremists. If it's going to happen in Kansas, it's going to happen in a whole lot of states. The traditionally red state of Kansas protecting abortion rights. On Tuesday, voters deciding to block an amendment that would have stripped abortion protections from the state's constitution. Even in some of the most conservative leaning counties, the measure was defeated. I was absolutely surprised and I have no explanation. And um, and again, it was just a gut punch. That's all I can tell you. The voters of Kansas sent a powerful signal that this fall, the American people will vote to preserve and protect the right and refuse to let them be ripped away by politicians. And my administration has their back. Democrats hoping this galvanizes their base when voters head to the ballot boxes in November, though abortion is only on the ballots in four other states this year. Republicans remain confident that Americans will instead be focusing on other pressing issues. I, I think voters come November will be very focused on the cost of gasoline and groceries and, and, and rent. The president signed an executive order Wednesday, which offers financial aid to low income women who have to travel to other states for abortion care. But his administration has not specified exactly how this will work or how it will be paid for. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Confusion continuing after one of the nation's largest credit reporting agencies admitted it provided inaccurate credit scores to lenders for three weeks earlier this year. Those faulty scores were sent to some of the biggest banks in the U.S. Nearly 300,000 people saw their scores change by at least 25 points, affecting things like their loan applications. One credit card expert at NerdWallet says if your score suffered and your bank denied your loan application, you still have options. The worst case scenario would be missing out on your dream home because you couldn't qualify for a mortgage or if you were approved for a loan, but you were approved for less than ideal terms. So your loan is costing you more money per month because you're paying a higher interest rate. You can talk to the lender and have them reassess uh, your application and give you more details about how they came to their decision. Equifax is blaming the errors on a computer coding issue, which the company says has now been fixed. The Department of Transportation is proposing rule changes that would make it easier for airline passengers to get flight refunds. Under the previous DOT rules, airlines were only required to pay back ticket charges if there was a significant change to the timing of a plane taking off. But now the DOT is proposing that passengers could get a refund if their arrival or departure times are moved by at least three hours or if they face other lengthy changes. The proposal comes amid a tough summer travel season. According to the tracking site FlightAware, about 40,000 U.S. flights have been canceled since Memorial Day. Opportunity to get more money back if something goes wrong makes it more of a reason to maybe get out and go to a better climate. 
but it's not oh, as hot. Oh, I know. <laughs> I, the return flight, when it's delayed, that's the problem uh, in this kind of heat. <laughs> And those people that sometimes sit on the, the plane on the tarmac for oh, hours on that end. that is brutal. Anyway, yeah, you don't want to be sitting in uh, anywhere without air conditioning on a day like this. Uh, over the next couple of days, we are going to start to see, and actually later on this evening, we'll start to see a little bit more in the way of some uh, Saharan dust sliding on in here. And uh, it's not going to be a lot, but just enough to obviously enhance some of the, the sunrises, sunsets out there, kind of that orangey glow. But that's not going to be sticking around forever because as we head on into, late tomorrow night and Saturday. Most of that should be getting on out of here. We also have something moving in from the Gulf of Mexico. Will it bring us at least a little bit of relief? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. High school volleyball is back and that means defending state champion Brandeis will start its bid to repeat. Larry has more later in sports. All right, take a look at this. A creepy creek in New Jersey with bright red waters. Just outside of Philadelphia, a portion of Pinsocken Creek turned red. It turns out the reason isn't, exci isn't as exciting as the images because a beverage facility is to blame. Officials say it happened after the Top Pop Packaging Company improperly discharged red dye into the wastewater treatment system. While the substance was not hazardous, the beverage manufacturer did receive a violation. Officials explained the red dye should clear in 24 to 48 hours. Parts of the Great Barrier Reef have recorded their highest amount of coral cover since monitoring began 36 years ago. A survey found average hard coral cover increased by about a third. The survey examined 87 reefs, reefs from August 2021 to May 2022. It is a rare piece of good news in the world of the famous reef which underwent its sixth mass bleaching event in March. Bleaching is a result of warmer than normal water temperatures, which triggers a stress reaction from the corals and can take nearly a decade to recover from. That is great news. That creek needs a good bleaching. Yeah, well. <laughs> That'd be scary yeah. to walk up to. Kind of reminded me of uh, the movie The Ten Commandments. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Luckily, there's an explanation for it. Yes. That <laughs> hopefully won't damage the environment and it was nothing too bad so all right it is just a hot hot day out there as you can see and uh boy what a pretty picture this was a couple of hours ago as the sun was coming up and uh when you don't even have a cloud in the sky there you know it's just going to be a sizzler out there and yeah we've got some beautiful blue skies as of right now but no shade, nothing to block that sun. And, uh, you know, you get a warm start. We stayed in the upper 70s this morning and nothing to obviously to block that sun and keep us from getting much, much hotter. So 99 today at two o'clock and then right between two and three o'clock, we're going to be getting up above uh, triple digit temperatures. And so for, as I was saying, last half hour, a good chunk of time, a good four and a half hours at least we are going to be up above triple digits even right now i mean air conditioners are starting to work over time but boy they sure have been getting a workout and we're going to top off at 103 later on today which will be a tie in the record high temperature same thing we did yesterday and then we stay in the triple digits through dinner time and then only drop down into the upper to mid 80s even by news time at 10 o'clock still at 89 degrees all right here's what the satellite picture radar our picture looks like pretty much nothing. We had some of the low clouds, this little darker shade of gray that moved on in here this morning. We'll see those again uh, tomorrow morning, just a, a few of them. Off to the east of us, here is this wave, and it looks really impressive right now, and it is, and you can see it's starting to drift in our direction. So this is going to start to work its way on in here, and that's what's going to give us the chance for some rain tomorrow, although a lot of computer models have really backed off on that. I mean, there will be a couple of them, especially off to the east, but if you had to pick a day between tomorrow and Saturday, I would lean more towards Saturday as far as a chance for a couple of showers around the area. But again, it's not going to be a huge chance. All right, talking about the tropics, you know, a lot of we haven't had anything going on. There hasn't been anything for the past, oh gosh, what, three, four weeks at least, even showing up or even the hint of something going on. But we're only right here as far as the tropical season, just over two months into it, and it peaks historically 
just about roughly one month from today, September 10th, the second week of September, and then starts to tail off. And the uh, National Hurricane Center had updated their, or we're going to be coming out with the kind of updated outlook for the tropical season. And they're still going with a slightly above normal uh, outlook, as according to the National Hurricane Center, which yeah, things are still going to get going. So even though there's nothing going on right now and looking at the tropics, I mean, a couple of clouds here and there, nothing really in the uh, intertropical convergence zone right there. So but still, it's still early in the season and most everything does start to really uh, kind of fire up in late August and then obviously going into September. There's the high. That's the thing that uh, just will not go away. This little wave, this low, will continue to work its way in our direction. That will give us that small chance and small being the operative word chance of rain tomorrow, obviously more off to the east and then on Saturday. And then behind that, this high, which just will not move. I mean, for all intents and purposes, it's covering most of the southern, almost three quarters of the country, and that thing just stays in place. And even going into next week, it just kind of moves on in here, settles on in. Finds a little comfy spot right up to the north of us and Again, for all intents and purposes, it's sitting right on top of things, so that just continues to push down the atmosphere, suppress any rain chances, and yeah, the heat goes on. All right, 103, record tying heat today and a heat advisory through 8 o'clock tonight, and we continue to chalk up triple-digit temperatures. Well, today, a little bit of a break tomorrow on Saturday, and then Sunday into next week. We're... Right now on KSAT.com, if you have a sweet tooth, here's your excuse to indulge. Yeah, it's National Chocolate Chip Cookie Day, and Tiff's Treats is one way to get some free cookies. The company is giving out free warm chocolate chip cookies in all of its stores today. You have to be present to get your free cookie, and there is a limit of one per customer. You can get one at any Tiff's Treats location. I'll give you my cookie. I appreciate it. That will be right back. Oh, my Camping with KSAT, powered by Davis Law Firm. There's been speculation about the tenure of Mike McCarthy as the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys following the early exit in the playoffs last season. So much so, reports indicate Jerry Jones went out of his way to pay extra to keep Dan Quinn as his defensive coordinator to give him a backup plan. Quinn addressed those reports yesterday at camp. I get to to look around some of those corners for Mike to, to point out some things, hey, this might be coming down the road, let's look at this. And so I just wanted in no uncertain terms, make sure I'm looking around the corners. I ain't coming around the corner. UTSA football charges the field every day they practice with excitement as they prepare to defend their Conference USA Championship. Running back Brendan Brady is back and he's ready to go. After graduating from UTSA in December, Brady made it clear on social media he was leaving to start his life outside of football. But once Sincere McCormick decided to leave for the NFL, and after injuries and spring ball left the Roadrunners thin at that position, Brady decided to return for a fifth year. Still, he wasn't 100% certain until Coach Trailer stepped in. I wasn't too sure at the time, but I ended up sticking with my decision. Um, and then later on uh, down the road, um, Coach Trailer, he actually went to my high school and recruited. And my mom works in the athletic department over there. And so, you know, obviously he talked to my high school coaches and he talked to my mom and, you know, was just saying that he wasn't going to give up on me coming back. And so he called me um, a little bit after that. Um, and was just basically talking to me saying like, you know, he, he wants me to come back. He thinks he, that I could add some value to the program and um, he really, uh, you know, missed what I had to offer. Certainly great to see the Steel High School alum back and his presence will help Frank Harris connect on some deep throws down the field like that one. Ball. Your defending 6A state champion Brandeis Broncos are getting ready for the new season. They lost 10 players from the 2021 championship team. Some key talent in D, but Coach Williams says of the seven players left, six of them were on the court at state. They still have quality student athletes as they look to go back to back. And they are this class 6A team to beat this season. Coach Williams is certainly getting her team ready for the task at hand. Yeah, so she says like we have a target on our back, right? And then we, she says like we can't let this affect how we play, right? Because a lot of eyes are going to be on us, but in the end we have to focus on the volleyball is the most important part. It's honestly made us 
that much more excited for this season like knowing you have that target on your back and knowing that you're the ones that everybody wants to be or just going out there and playing your hardest knowing that everyone has this like set expectation of you it's really exciting and it just makes you want to perform better in the gym our kind of thing this this year is going to be we have the same expectations just a different journey things are going to be a little different obviously we're going to be in sync we're going to take a little while to kind of get where we want to be but um, I think having a target on your back is kind of fun you know we're competitors here we like to compete and so for us it's just, I mean I feel like we've always had that going on here anyway. Brandeis will start the regular season Monday, August 8th against O'Connor at Northside Gym. Having a target on our back is kind of fun. It's awesome. That's that competitive nature. Yeah. Yep. It's always tough to repeat, but, you know, we'll see if that championship experience carries over. Thanks for that, Larry. All right, the superhero car show and Comic Con starts today at the Freeman Coliseum Expo Hall. And I say live loves that. Jen, any celebrity sightings so far? Ooh, not yet, but I am excited. As you can see behind me, we're here at the Hollywood Car Show, right? And we have the mystery machine behind me. But some of these vehicles here are from the actual movies, including Bad Boys 2, and we have the DeLorean over there, the Transformers vehicles. So excited to give you guys a sneak peek today. And yes, we may even chat with a celebrity, but we're waiting on that. Also, if, if you are looking for some easy dinner ideas, ideas for as we head to back to school. Hi, I'm Nicole Flowers from the Culinary Cottage and today we're going to be showing you two recipes perfect for your busy weeknights. Uh, one is my favorite muffin tin meatloafs. And one tip we're going to give you is bake these in your muffin tin, leave a space empty, makes it super easy to get it in and out of the oven. I don't know why I've never thought of that. Great tip there. Also, if you're looking to give back, there is a school uniform drive happening with La Familia Cortez. We will tell you all about that. We also want to know, you know, since the San Antonio Film Festival is happening this week, we're also here at Comic Con. Who is that celebrity you've met? Do you have a photo, maybe a story, maybe no photo to go along with it? Let us know. We may share that later on on the show. We have a few to share, too. That and much more coming up on SA Live. Hello everyone, these are your top headlines from Cheddar News. Ticketmaster has begun selling tickets inside the TikTok app. Only select performers will get access to the feature at launch, but it's set to expand to more users over time. Now performers can add a link directly on their TikTok videos and it opens an in-app browser to purchase tickets to an event. Meanwhile, Ford's new vehicle sales jumped last month, rising 36% year to date, while industry sales fell an estimated 10.5%. Sales of the popular F-Series pickups in the U.S. passed 60,000 in the month of July, and the automakers said their share of the U.S. EV market hit a record of almost 11% last month. And President Biden signed an executive order Wednesday aimed at safeguarding access to abortion. Biden saying women's health and lives are on the line. It helps that women travel out of state to receive abortions and ensures that health care providers comply with federal law so women aren't delayed in getting care. And that's your Cheddar News Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. Well, we appreciate you joining us today. That's all our show for now. All right. They've got some fun going on at Comic-Con. And Mike Osterhage has jogged from the studio <laughs> down to Market Square. Did he make it in time? Hmm. SA Live starts right now. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square. This is SA Live. Hello and happy Thursday. Yes, we have special guests joining us today. Yes, we are taking SA Live on the road here at Comic Con. Good afternoon. I'm Dan Tobias Strusky. Mike Osterhage will join us shortly, as Ursula mentioned there. And I'm out here at the Freeman Coliseum Expo Hall for the Superhero Car Show and Comic Con. And it's one last thing that you can maybe do with the kiddos before the school year begins. We are still continuing our back to school week, and we have some of those segments coming up later in the show. But for our question of the day, we want to know, do you have a celebrity, maybe a photo with a celebrity, a story where you met them? Maybe you don't have a photo, but we want to see those and maybe share a story. We may share those a little later in the show. Now with SA Live, of course, we've met several celebrities. Um, some of my favorites, I know it's 
Ethan Hawke. We got to chat with him. That was really cool. Such a nice person. And we also had Lou Diamond Phillips. That was a really fun interview. He made me laugh. But my favorite, I have to say, was Quentin Aaron. Just such a teddy bear from the blind side. And we brought him puppies. That was great. I know Mike has his favorites. And so does Fiona. They shared some of those as well. But I have to say, we are very lucky that we've had some of those amazing guests. So share your photos. We want to see them. And we will share those, as I mentioned, a little later in the show. Just tag us on our social media pages at SA Live KSAT, Facebook, and Twitter. You may see them later in the show. Now back to why I am here. The Superhero Car Show and Comic Con begins in less than an hour, by the way. And I'm getting a sneak peek here. And joining me now to talk about everything you can expect from this four-day event is Bob Wills, the event organizer. Hello. Good afternoon. How are you? Thanks for having me here today. We're getting a sneak peek, right? Yes. The doors aren't open yet. You're the first ones to show the world. I'm so excited. Now, you were telling me already a little bit about what we have here. But please, what, uh, first of all, I guess, why cars at Comic Con? <laughs> Well, well like that. <laughs> you know, cars are such an integral part. I mean, you know, there can be no Batman without the Batmobiles. So we have the original 86 Batmobile. We have an 89 Batmobile. I mean, we have Fred Flintstone. We have Optimus Prime from the real Optimus Prime from the Transformer movies. We have Fast and Furious cars. We have stunt cars filled with bullets. Um, we have NASCARs. We have... Uh, the, the Speed Racer Mach 5, and I think your your cameraman may have gotten the first shot, but we got the Fred Flintstone mobile. Yes, yes. I, I know you mentioned some of these are from the actual movies, Bad Boys 2. We see mm -hmm. all the bullets in the orange vehicle over there. Um, yes, yeah, so tell me about those. Well, the, a lot of them are different. You know, I, I've picked them all up from studios or, or auctions or private collectors. Um, you know, like we have the 1970 Roadrunner right here that is uh, that Toretto, Vin Diesel, drove in Fast and Furious 7. Um, we have also on the other end, we have the Triple X car, the secret agent movie that Vin Diesel made. Um, we have A-Team van down yeah, there. Look at uh, that. Over in the corner over there is really incredible vehicle. Uh, I don't think he's seen it on camera yet, but we have the actual car that Tony Stark, AKA Iron Man, drove in Iron Man 2 Boy. on the racetrack. Um, so that is an official car. We've got the Love Bug stunt car. Mm -hmm. um, we have the um, Munster's coach. We have the coffin car. <laughs> and, and, and one of my favorites over there is, you see that Jeep over there? In the corner there? Our photographer's looking where you're looking. Okay, over Yeah, it's here. way a far left, left top, cameraman. Yes, left. Look okay. way over there, uh -huh. if you can see that Jeep in the corner. That is what we call the General's Jeep. Back then they were called Willys. That was at Iwo Jima in World War II. Um, I bought that from the general a couple years ago. He retired from the military. He had it for 47 years. Wow. And if you put that key in it, it starts up because I think they made sure the general's Jeep always <laughs> ran perfectly. <laughs> it, it runs like a clock. So some wow. amazing vehicles, some the amazing DeLorean history. The over there, too. I saw that one. Uh, right. How can people get here? I know there's, uh, I guess, kids 14 and under are free. So. All kids with adults, mm -hmm. any adult purchase. If you can buy one adult, you can bring six kids with you. You just got to go to pmxevents.com, and they can buy their tickets there. That'll save the line, or they can buy the tickets when they get here. That is amazing. And what celebrities can people see here? We're getting excited about that, too. Well, um, today we have about four or five. You know, the big one today is Hulk Hogan. Tomorrow we have, again, Hulk. We have Giancarlo Esposito, who's in so many movies and shows that people love. Um, we have Stephen Amell, uh, who is for years was um, on the series Arrow. We have Simu Liu, who is the star from Shang -Chi, Marvel's Shang-Chi movie. Um, I have to look at my list. Yes, There's so many people tomorrow. Special performance by the Blues Brothers too, that's, right? That's in the Coliseum yeah. tomorrow night. Those tickets are online. There's, there's, we still have seats available, but uh, Dan Aykroyd will be there and he will reprise his role as um, the, one of the Blues Brothers along with Jim Belushi. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're going to put on an amazing concert show. Thank 
you so much for all the information. Again, free for kids 14 and under. And I'm sure you saw all these amazing vehicles here. I'm excited just to be in this room. Um, so we'll get a little bit more later in the show, maybe a celebrity. We're not going to say who mm. just yet. But for more information, you can head over to SALive.com. Click the As Seen on SA Live tab or scan the QR code on your screen. Bob, thank you so much. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. All right. From family fun activities to preparing the family for their back to school routines with some dinner recipes. Today we get help from a local cooking school instructor. Nicole Flowers is known for her cooking school, The Cooking Cottage over in Bracken Village. But today she's sharing some of her go-to recipes for busy families. Hello. Dinner doesn't need to be complicated. So today I'm gonna to show you two recipes, a sheet pan dinner and muffin tin meatloaf. So whenever my schedule gets really chaotic, the one thing that I like to simplify is my dinners. And I have two pans that are my favorite for making dinners quick and simple, my muffin tin and a sheet pan. So today we have made um, a recipe in both, and one is the sheet pan chicken and broccoli, easily thrown together with items that you probably already have on hand, and about 20 minutes in the oven it is definitely the perfect weeknight recipe. It's mustard, it's uh, garlic and ginger, and we used broccoli, some miso paste for that umami. These are bone-in skinless thighs. Uh, the bone-in helps to keep them juicy, and you take the skin off, that helps them to cook a little bit quicker. Uh, we roasted them with this marinade for about 10 minutes, threw on some broccoli, roasted it about another 15 minutes, voila, dinner's done. And I love this recipe because the next day you can shred up this chicken, chop up this broccoli, make a salad out of it. Um, you can make a rice bowl out of it. It's very versatile. Um, and sheet pan dinners also are incredibly versatile. So another great pan when you're trying to simplify your dinner is your uh, muffin tin. We have made little mini meatloafs in the muffin tin tonight. Uh, these are a barbecue version. So we used barbecue sauce, garlic powder, onion powder, I sauteed a little bit of onion and bell pepper, um, some eggs, some breadcrumb, added that to the mixture, and I actually made this last night, so it sat in the fridge, and then today I just popped them into my ungreased pan and baked them about 15 minutes. Um, you can brush a sauce, ketchup, extra barbecue sauce, whatever you'd like on the top, uh, either put them under the broiler to get it nice and crisp, or just put them back in the oven for a few minutes. And I also love this because the next day, you can pop these in the kids' lunches, little meatloafs in their lunches. You can make meatloaf sandwiches out of them. They're super versatile. You can also use any meatloaf recipe you want, your favorite meatloaf recipe. Um, a Tex-Mex version would be great. Italian with some Parmesan and some basil and some sun-dried tomatoes would be lovely. You can switch up your meats. Um, I always like to use meat with a, a slightly lower fat content because it does tend to get a little bit greasy. So this is 90-10, I think. Uh, sirloin works very well. You could add a little ground turkey in with this if you'd like to lighten it up. Um, but it's a really easy, simple, pop this into your muffin tin, bakes about 15 minutes. I like to leave one of my muffin uh, tins empty so that I can get it in and out of the oven easily. Um, it's just a really great, quick, fun, versatile weeknight dinner. Nicole Flowers is the owner of the Culinary Cottage. Located in Bracken Village, she hosts several classes throughout the fall and into the holiday season. If you'd like more recipes, you can head over to her blog on her website. We have that listed on SALive.com. Just click the As Seen on SA Live tab. And both of those recipes are on our SA Live homepage right now, also under the recipes tab. For more information on the culinary cottage, head to SALive.com, click the As Seen on SA Live tab, where we have provided a link to their page, or you can scan that QR code on your screen. Still ahead on the show, khakis for churros. We'll share what you need to know about this school uniform drive happening this weekend. Plus, get creative with your child's school lunch. We have some ideas to add to your list, plus some teacher must-haves. That and more coming up after the break. <laughs> 